Hello and welcome to the DevForge Network. So continuing on from the last video where we said that we were going to have several engineers try to develop a chess game. We introduced some of the problems they might face and how Git is a great solution to those problems. In this video, we're going to explore how Git addresses those problems. And we're going to talk about a few really simple concepts and really simple commands. If you understand everything in this video, you'll have no problem with the rest of the series. And really just understanding these commands and concepts, you should be able to collaborate with any team that's already using Git. So first let's go over some of the concepts. Uh, so we said we were going to be making chess. So there's chess. And for sake of simplicity and completeness, let's walk through the lives of our UI programmer and our gameplay programmer. So we'll do gameplay. All right? Cool. So the first thing we need to talk about is the remote repo. So the remote repo is really simple. So far, far away on a remote island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where you have tropical trees everywhere, right? Lush green forests. You have the remote repo, right? And it's a little beacon like this. And it's got a little transmitter for which it can broadcast information. And it's, it's far away, right? It's just deep down in a cave somewhere in a secret lair, and it's just chilling. Then we have the local repo. And the local repo is going to sit right here on the user's machine. So the UI programmer's got a local repo. The gameplay programmer's got a local repo. And the gameplay programmer's local repo has no idea what the UI programmer's local repo has. So they're totally separated, completely disjoint. Lastly, uh, there's we'll talk about log uh, later, but for right now, uh, workspace is the last thing. Workspace. And this is also a thing that both UI, I'm just gonna write. The UI programmer and the gameplay programmer both have a local repo and a workspace. So for clarity, this is all on UI programmer's machine and this is all on the gameplay programmer's machine. So let's talk about our first command. So repo is short for repository. And when you first create a repo, that repo gets created on the remote server in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, just chilling on this island. This is where chess was created. So we created chess here. And now we got to figure out how are we going to get this remote data onto each of our machines. Keep in mind that this repository has no information yet, completely from scratch. So we're going to use the clone command. So when we clone a repository, we specify the location of the repository and we say, hey, clone that to my machine. So when we clone, what we're actually doing is taking all of the data that's in our remote repository and we're bringing it to our local repository. It's basically just copying it straight from the remote, whatever the state is, and putting it in our local repository. So initially, our workspace reflects whatever's in our local repository. And we'll talk more about what the workspace is in a second. All right, awesome. Now, our UI programmer and our gameplay programmer both now have the exact same project. They're both looking at basically nothing right now. So the UI programmer, his job is to create the main window and maybe some buttons. Maybe these buttons are going to start the game. So he pulls up Visual Studio and he starts writing button, btn.cpp, right? So he's written button cpp and that is in his workspace. So that's basically like your working copy of the repository. All of the changes that you make happen in the workspace and then there's a process to copy that data from your workspace to your local repository and then finally to the remote repository where everybody else can gather those changes. So that brings us to our commit command. So our UI programmer is finished with button.cpp. He's ready to take all of his changes and throw it at the remote. The first thing he has to do is commit those changes. So if you think about the word commit and what it actually means, it may seem a little strange that that's the command, I guess you can think of it as you're committing to push the changes. So when you commit your changes, they go to the local repo. So that's what he's gonna do. So let's do button.cpp. He's committed those changes. Now they're in his local repository. 
And the last thing that he needs to do is push those changes. And when he pushes, they'll push all the way up to the remote repository. Button.cpp is in the remote because we've pushed it there. All right. Now is the fun part. While the UI programmer has been creating button CPP, our gameplay programmer has been creating game loop.cpp. He's finished with his game loop and he's ready to push that to the root to the remote as well. So the first thing he's gonna do is commit those changes to his local repository. So he does a commit. Now game loop CPP is right here. Because beforehand his local repository had no idea what game loop CPP was. He just committed it, and now he's ready to push to the remote. However, when the gameplay programmer tries to push to the remote, his remote's gonna say, whoa, 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 whoa. Your local repo doesn't look right. So what the remote has actually done is it's checked to see if your local repository is equal to the remote repository minus your changes, which are pretty much the stuff that you had in your workspace that you committed to your local, right? Now, this is math, and that's fine. I'm gonna explain it. So your local repository only has gameloop.cpp. It doesn't know about button CPP. The remote has button CPP, and it doesn't have your changes. So let's write this out. So your local has game loop, and the remote has button. And I put minus your changes here because the remote doesn't care what changes that you make, but it does care that your local repository equals the remote. So what you really need to do is sync your local repository with the remote. And we can do that with the pull command. And pull is basically going to pull all of the changes that are in the repo that are not in the local repository and put them into the local repository. It will update his local to resemble the remote. So now his local has gameloop.cpp as well as button. CPP. Gameplay programmer is ready to push, so he'll push all of his changes from his local straight up into the remote, far, far away. And the UI programmer is now able to pull. So when he pulls, all the stuff comes down from the remote and straight into his local. Pretty much when you're developing, you're just going to make you're just going to make your changes in your workspace, commit them to your local repository, and push them out to the remote. And then when somebody else makes a change and pushes to the remote, you just pull those changes onto your local repository so that you're all working on the same project. So last thing that I want to talk about is this log here. So internally, when you're pushing changes, you're really just throwing your changes on top of a stack of other changes. And the fact that it's a stack is pretty important. So let's talk about what that looks like. So let's look at the UI programmer and the gameplay programmer and the remote. So the UI programmer first committed his changes to local and then he pushed those changes to the remote. So now the remote has button.cpp. Then the gameplay programmer created game loop. He needs to pull from the remote to update his local repo. So in this case, and this is not always the case, so when you're pulling, usually what you want to do or at least the branching strategy that I like to use is to use pull dash dash rebase. And don't worry, the later videos will show you how to do this and what it is. This ensures that your changes that are committed locally will always be placed on top of anything you pull from the remote. So from the gameplay programmer's perspective, his local repo is ahead of the remote. So when he pulls from the remote, it's basically going to update his repo to look like this. So now he has button.cpp and he has his game loop.cpp. So when he pushes his changes to the remote, it will add his game loop CPP on top of button.cpp. So the new remote now looks like this. Game loop.cpp and it has button CPP. And essentially, as far as the remote is concerned, the way this worked out is UI programmer made a commit right here and the remote saw the gameplay programmer's local repo, which was ahead of the UI programmer's repo. And when it merged the two together, it had a branch that looked like this, where all these things are connected. So the new head, the new head of the repository is this guy right here. And in its history, it has the commit from the UI programmer and a commit from the gameplay programmer. Earlier, when I mentioned the pull rebase command, the reason you want to do that is because then it makes your branch look nice and clean because your branch would then look like this where it's all just one branch of nice, clean, historical commits. And this series of commits forms your log. So that's pretty much all there is to get. 
there's only four different commands you need to know to perform all of the basic functions that Git offers and only a few concepts to understand. Git has a little bit of a learning curve and if this video doesn't make complete sense yet, trust me, stay with me. The next videos will actually get into some real world examples. I'll walk through how to commit code, how to push code, how to pull code, how to interact with GitHub, and we'll do all of this in a Git bash environment. That's all for this video. As always, you can leave any feedback in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.